You ever hear the story that Eric Johnson could tell the difference in what kind of battery was being used in various guitar pedals? Now, it's a little bit of an urban myth, but let's face it, it's Eric Johnson. That dude wrote Cliffs of Dover. I could still barely play the intro. So, you know what? I'll use Duracell batteries if Eric wants me to. Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to Theoretically Music, where we talk about guitars and technology and recording. So as guitar players, we love pedals. Uh, so does that mean that now that we're moving into the world of DAWs and VSTs that we have to stop using them? Absolutely not. But there are some things that you're gonna wanna know before you plug your $7,000 Klon into the front of your interface. So in general, yes, it's totally safe to plug your guitar pedals into the front of your interface just the same way that you would plug them into an amplifier. You're not gonna fry anything. So there's no right or wrong way in terms of ordering your pedals into your interface, but a good rule of thumb is the standard model. Volumes into your compressor, into your drives, into your delays, into your reverbs. That said, you can get plenty of creative effects by swapping those orders around, and there are a ton of guitar players that actually prefer to have their compressor running after their drives. And splitting things even further down, uh, some players like to just line their pedals up and throw them into the front of their amplifier, whereas some others like to have their drives and compressors running into the front of the amplifier while having their reverbs and delays running in an effects loop. Now there is a way to simulate that in your DAW. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. And on that note, let's go check out some pedals. Okay, I got three pedals set up. The Wappler Terraform, which is a modulation station. This is just fun to say, modulation station, modulation station. The Archer Rockaway, which is a Klon clone with the added benefit of having a graphic EQ built into it. And the Joyo Vintage Overdrive, which is a Tube Screamer clone. Uh, it's super cheap and I, honestly, I highly recommend it. I've had this thing for nine years and it's just been a monster. So all of that's running into the Focusrite Scarlet uh, and then out of the Scarlet and into the Neural DSP Cory Wong. Um, and that is running default setting. Uh, I think it's called the Amp Snob. Uh, this is based on a Dumble model. Um, so cleared, it sounds a little bit like this. It's a pretty good sound uh, as is. Okay, so I've turned off the Tube Screamer in the Cory Wong DSP. So let's just see how it sounds. Okay, uh, and then now I'm going to add in the Archer Rockaway. Yeah, sounds pretty good. So let's try out some modulation effects um, with the Wampler U Vibe on. <laughs> So not just Univibes, but flangers also work really well. Yeah, so I'm not that great an Eddie player, but you know, uh, you can hear what the flanger sounds like at least. So you may have thought to yourself, well, there's a Tube Screamer on the table and there's a Tube Screamer in the VST. Is there gonna be a shootout? Yes, there is. So I've clean slated all the front end pedals on the Cory Wong and everything is now set to noon. So let's try out the VST version. Here we go. And now the pedal version. Okay, now let's dime everything. So this is the physical pedal. Now our dimed VST. So one thing that I noticed, uh, especially when we dimed everything, is that the physical pedal is going to introduce a lot more noise into your signal, whereas the VST version does not because it's digital. Uh, so that's one thing to bear in mind. So other than that, my personal preference leans towards the physical pedals. Uh, I think there's just a little bit more of a richness and harmonics uh, with them as opposed to the VST ones. That said, the plugins also sound extremely fantastic, but please do let me know what you think in the comments. So when it comes to your reverbs and delays and all of the stuff that would go into your effects loops, um, you have a couple of different options here. You can either run all of those directly into your input just the same way as you would a traditional amplifier, or you can invest in an interface with more outputs, um, which will allow you to split your guitar signal into drives and compressors and delays and reverbs, but that option can get pretty costly, so that might be something that you want to discuss with your wallet. 
The third option is to use your DAW's built-in reverbs or delays or third-party plugins such as the very free Valhalla Supermassive which has some wild effects on it that, in my opinion, rival the Strymon Big Sky. So that's basically a look at guitar pedals running into an interface. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, please do hit the like and subscribe button. It would mean a lot. I'd also love to hear if you guys have any ideas on things that you'd like to see covered. Um, please leave a comment, let me know, and I will dig into it. And lastly, if you're a guitar player new to Ableton, you might want to check out this video, which is a from the grounds up, nuts and bolts look at Ableton from a guitar player's perspective. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you soon.